Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm Becky Alexander Frost and you're watching RJF Makes. Um, RJF Makes is a brand of sewing and panels. Yeah! So if you're tuned in today, you're wanting to learn to make the machine cover for your sewing machine. Um, it's part of the um, Just So Happy range, that um, the panels that I've recently brought out. And yeah, you should guys, um, if you have already pre-ordered, you should be getting them quite soon. So here comes the nitty gritty. If you're new to my channel um, and you like the content, please click the subscribe button. And if you're um, liking this video, please give me a thumbs up. I sad in these thumbs. Um, please give me a thumbs up. That's, that's the main thing. Um, any questions you have on the tutorial, please ask below. Um, and or go over to my Facebook group, which is linked in the description below. Right, so I'm gonna ask a question. So, um, and answer below. Um, this will help um, identify what type of sewing that you'll be doing in the long run and stuff like that. So, the question is, what type of machine will you be making your cover for? And answer that below, and then basically, you'll get an idea I will get an idea of what you're making and what you're making it for. Now, so let's get into the bits where you need to um, go over to. So there'll be a blog post which I will link below which is basically for your cutting out. Um, and there will also be a blog post of what you will need for your machine cover. The cutting out for this machine cover isn't specifically mentioned in the actual blog post so for instance you have to do a bit of measuring measuring of your actual machine so i'm going to do a small clip now which will be right about now so for measurement a part one you need to measure the height of your machine from the lowest part of your machine which is by the table and up to the top times that by two then you need to measure the width of the top of your machine this will be measurement part 2a now we're going to take these two measurements and add them together so that's part 1 and part 2 and you will have a new a measurement now we need to take that new A measurement and add two inches to it. This will come your final height cutting out. Now we're moving on to measurement B. This will be the width of your machine. Add two inches and this will be the cutting out for the width of the machine. Okay, so now you've seen the clip on how to measure your machine and that is going to be your um, measurements that you need for your cutting out of your fabric so in the vlog post it mentions that you have a measurement a b and basically you have to add um, extra bits to it so now you've got your a b and a b measurements you know you need those specific measurements then you need to add your two inches on where I've specifically said in that, um, basically, montage. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it can be confusing. So if if you are getting stuck, don't hesitate. Message me privately if you don't want to put it out in the Facebook group or um, put it in the comments below that you're struggling. I will can I can work out your measurements for you if um, if that's how you want if you are really 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 struggling struggling so now you've got your a b measurements you will need to do some cutting out so you'll need your front panel which is the one that's going to be on the outside i'm going to be using one of the just so happy range um panels that i've produced um then you'll need um some um backing fabric so the backing fabric is generally your A and B measurement as well. You'll also need um, two pieces of interfacing, which is your A, B measurements. 
and you'll also need one piece of fusible fleece which is your AB measurements and then you'll need five strips um, five strips of binding and I've done straight, straight of grain binding which is salvage to salvage and I've done two and a quarter inch so that's five strips of fabric that's 44 inches long or 43 inches long at um, two and a quarter inch wide so so yeah you need five strips in total so three of those three <laughs> not four three three of those strips are for your binding all the way around your cover and two of those strips are for your um, ties that are on both sides so now you need to prep your fabric so you need to obviously iron it I actually starch my fabric I use best press first before cutting out and I um, then I iron on both of my pieces of fabric my interfacing on the wrong side obviously and then on one of the pieces it doesn't matter which piece um, because they're all the same measurement I then fuse the fusible fleece and the way I do my fusible fleece is just basically steam within my um, iron on a medium setting on on heat or on a medium setting on my iron and um, I use a pressing cloth on top now if you can't generate steam through your iron damp that pressing cloth with spritzer bottle of water and then just basically hold hold it into areas that um, need fusing needs fusing all the way around so now you've done that we can get on to the tutorial right so now I've done all the interfacing and the fusing of the fusible fleece so like I say I've got my panel and I've got my fusible fleece and the fusible fleece is going right up to the edge of the fabric this means that when we um, wrap around the binding it means that um, the binding will well the measurement that I have actually listed is so it can wrap around the, um, the fleece as well so no need to trim back your um, fleece um, it's not needed right so we're going to get um, both our outer front and our lining piece and then we're going to pop those right sides, um, wrong sides together and clip all the way around now in my machine I've got moon thread um, which is um, a polyester thread you can use coats or something like that or um, Gitterman sew all thread I've got a size 14 needle yes that's a 14 I normally use a size 16 so that's why I'm emphasizing a size 14 needle I've also got a walking foot on my machine I'm using the Elna Pro Excellence 720 um, it's not needed not not needed for a big chunky machine you can make this case this um, cover on um, any machine basically I'm just this is just my baby so yeah so yeah that's everything you need to know on the machine <laughs> right so let's get into it I'm gonna point down the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing right so I've got my lining piece which is part of my um, just so happy range and I've got my panel piece which is part of my just so happy range I'm going to flip the um, the actual front of the panel wrong side facing up and then I'm going to get my lining fabric and put that wrong side facing down so that's wrong side to wrong side and then I'm just going to match up all the edges. Now they should all, if you've got, if you've cut it precisely, um, if you've cut it precisely, I'm going to clip all the way around. So I'm using Wonder Clips today. So now you should have it all clipped together as a sandwich. So I've got my outer front and my lining, which are both interfaced. And in between that, I've got 
one of the pieces um, fused with fusible fleece. Now I did find that I hadn't cut my lining correct and so I have got a bit of an overhang but don't worry if you got more of your lining cut a bit extra and then we can trim that back at a later stage. So now we're going to base stitch all the way around this using a large stitch. I'm going to use a stitch, stitch length 5. Um, it's a number 5 stitch length and um, I'm going to be doing it just before the quarter of an inch so I'm, I'm probably going to go all the way around doing one eighth of an inch all the way around and that's one eighth of an inch away from the outer front edge right so so I'm putting my foot down it's just over one eighth but not at the quarter of an inch mark I'm popping my machine to a stitch length 5 because bearing in mind we're only basing this into place and I'm just going to go all the way around um, removing the pegs or uh, the clips as you go along. Right, I'm just coming down my last row, um, my last um, edge. Still using the same stitch length for stitch length 5 and not that far away from um, the edge. Right, so I'm just coming to that corner. I'm going to make sure my needle's down in the down position. I'm going to lift up my foot, my presser foot, pivot around and make sure my presser foot goes back down again and then just carry on sewing to the way you actually started off and I'm just going to reverse my stitch. Right, so where I've got that overhang fabric, I'm just going to trim all that back and then I'll move on to the next step. Right, so now we have our um, front and lining piece based together with the sandwich of the fusible fleece and the, uh, and the interfacing. We're going to pop this to one side and move on to making our ties. So we've got all our strips. So for this we only need two pieces. So I'm going to just pop these to one side. <clears throat> right, so they're 44 inches long at the moment. So we're just going to fold those in half and find the centre, which generally where the where it was folded on the bolt. And I'm just going to cut right into where that fold was. So, and now I've got two pieces. So I'm going to do that for the other strip, making sure both of the salvages meet up. And so now you have four pieces. So Going over to your iron, you need to press so it's in half, so it's wrong sides to wrong side, and press that, and then press it all the way down, and then you need to open it up, and then you'll have a centre crease. Where your centre crease is, you'll need to bring your two long raw edges into that centre crease, and give it a press and then you need to fold it again and give it a press. I will show you once I've done my pressing of these four pieces. Right, so now I've ironed all my um, tie pieces. What I did was fold it in half, wrong sides together and gave it a good press all the way down. And then I opened it up 
and then got to the two long sides and pressed those into the center on the wrong side and then basically I folded this again all the way down and pressed it so it makes a um, it's around about half an inch strip me personally I've left this bit raw um, which is the salvage part I'm not really bothered but if you are bothered you and you don't want this raw edge um, at the end of your tie you can just fold that in press it and then just re-press it in like you were before so now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and just basically sew down just this opened edge I'm not sewing down both sides I'm saving time but if you want to you can sew down both sides I'm using the stitch length um, 2.4 on my machine and I'm just going to sew all four strips together and I'm going to piece chain them together like you're doing quilting right so starting off with the one piece stitch length four and if you're finding that it's opening up you can always clip down this edge if you want to I'm not really bothered and I'm stitching one eighth of an inch away or as close as possible to the edge As I'm coming to the end of this one strip, before I chain piece the next piece on, I am going to just reverse my stitch and lock the stitch line into place. Right, and then I'm just going to move on to my next piece, leaving my needle down. I'm just going to lift up my foot, pop the piece underneath and carry on sewing. And basically I will snip the thread in between each piece um, at the end. Right, so now I've sewn those all together, I'm just going to snip the thread in between each piece. So the next thing you need to do is work out where you're going to put those ties on the two long sides of your um, machine cover. So me being me, I like to tie you know, where the hand wheel is on your sewing machine, just underneath it. So you need to measure up from where you um, was told to actually measure from for measuring up your machine. <coughs> So I'm going to go, I'm getting my trusty quilters roll, and my, my um, handle comes to about here. So I'm going to go eight inches up. So, and I'm going to go eight inches up on this side, so it's a bit more equal to eight on both sides. So if I um, show you how to do that. Right, so now I have got my um my machine cover sandwich from the one short end on one long side i'm going to measure up eight inches so your inches might be different so it's best if you actually measure and basically work out where your hand crank is of your machine and measure up then whatever that measurement is is where you need to put your ties at so the first one is eight so the first one will go here so i'm measuring eight inches so i've got my rule on the um short edge here and going up my long edge and i'm at the eight inch mark now on my tie i left the salvage the raw edge or you might have folded that bit over that's the bit that needs to go towards the um, inside 
of your the the inner part of your actual cover and the main raw edge of the tie needs to go onto the edge butting up next to the edge I will show you in a minute and you're just going to pick that into place so, so you're going to basically just clip it into place and then we're just going to sew over this within the quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to reverse stitch a few times and run over it a few times to make sure it's secure. Then I'm going to measure move over to the opposite side of this tie the other side of the long and measure it up eight inches so your inches will be different and I'm going to clip this tie into place now I'm just going to sew that into place Turn this around. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to move over to the other end, which is the other short end, and repeat the same process. Measure up eight inches on the side of the one the long sides clip the um strip the tie strip into place and then i'm going to repeat it on this side and then i'll meet you back so now i've got the tie sewed into place what i'm going to do is just peg them together in the center of this um this um cover just so that the um they are basically out the way so I've just clipped it into place like so right so you should have your ties now sewn on and clipped out the way we're going to pop this to one side so we can move on to the outer binding and the finishing steps and all the way over there right so you still got your three strips of binding so I'm saying that you've got three strips of binding, but um, you may not need three strips. I'm only going by my large machine, so you might only need two, but I would personally cut three and then keep the other one as a spare, and you can make a strappy but a strap, a scrappy binding for a quilt or something. Right, so we need to sew all these three strips together. But we don't want to sew them straight together. Um, when I say straight, you don't want two straight edges meeting. We're going to sew it on a um, at an angle, a 45 degree angle. Because if we sew it on straight, and when it comes to sewing it all together, you'll find that those parts will be very bulky. But if we sew it at a 45 degree angle, it won't be won't be bulky so and it will save you aggro when sewing it together right so you're going to get two pieces two pieces to start off with now i have done this in a past tutorial and um, which is on the crafters um the craft bucket bag tutorial of how to make the binding for around the edge of the actual um bag but i will run through it now so you're going to lay one piece of binding right side facing up then you're going to get the other piece of binding open it out and you're going to lay this wrong side facing uh, right side facing down and you're going to overlap it so so you're going to overlap it like this now if you're like me i do like to just pop a in 
Okay, so if you're a bit nervous at sewing from this edge to this edge, because that's where you're going to have to sew, so you're going to have to sew across, you can draw a diagonal line. So it doesn't matter if this doesn't disappear or anything like that. You just want it to be seen for when you're sewing. So I'm drawing from this corner here, this corner here, all the way up to this corner here. Now I'm going to sew using a stitch length 2, that's a number 2, and I'm going to sew from this corner all the way to this corner. Right, I'm going to take this and sew across that one line. Using a stitch length 2. And you don't need to reverse your stitches, but just remember to take that pin out if you have put a pin in. So now you can see I've sewn across that line there to make it um, easy and making sure that you go from corner to corner. Making sure you go from this corner here to this corner here. Right, so the next thing you need to do is from this sewn line we need to trim this excess pieces off. So I trim so this is level with the top piece then I trim a quarter of an inch away from that sewing line approximately and then I trim straightening up at that edge so later on um, we will open up this seam like so and give it a press I'm just going to finger press it at the moment. Right, so we need to now go on to the move it down to the other end and add the other strip on the exactly same way, and then you will have three pieces sewn together. Right, so you should have all your three pieces um, sewn together. Like I said before, you're going to go to your sewing machine and press open the two joined seams so we're going to press this one open and then you're going to go and press this one open and give it a bit of steam and then your next step is while you're at the sewing machine you will need to press um, this in half so you're matching up the two long sides and it's wrong sides to wrong sides and you're going to match up the two raw edges and you're going to press all the way along so then it's half the size and then I'll meet you back at the sewing machine so now I've pressed my binding in half all the way along and opened up those, seam line, uh, those seams and gave them a good press we're now going to attach this to your um, panel or your stash depending on what fabric you're using now you need to make sure you definitely use a quarter of an inch seam allowance because I've only made the binding so it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance in the instructions the measurements I mean <laughs> right right so now you're gonna need some wonder clips and your binding and your panel we're going to start off just above one of the ties on one of the long edges and I'm just going to lay from the tie around about six inches of binding going up I'm just going to pop a clip in and I'm just going to do one more clip here just underneath the tie I don't like to clip as I'm going around because when it comes to the binding I let the binding do its own thing 
up to up to where the corners are and then I will mitre so I'm going to show you that basically so this bit here where I've left six inches above the first tie I'm going to start sewing round about on the tie and we're going to leave this flapping around and um, the reason why we've got that is when we come all the way around and bind the um, the binding I'm going to stop around about here and then what I'm going to do is sew the two pieces of binding together that will meet at this point here and then basically trim off the excess but I will show you that as we go along so like I say I'm just going to start just either on or below that first um, tie and remember it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance And I'm using a stitch length three, number three. Alright, so I'm going to sew my binding and I'm going to stop a quarter of an inch away from this straight edge. As you can see I'm going quite slow because I don't want to miss that quarter of an inch. So that's quarter of an inch still needs to be up. Then I'm going to pull it away and I've still got it attached to my thread. Don't worry about that. What you're going to do now is, so I've actually just trimmed my thread just to show you but if you can do this closer to your sewing machine and with your thread still attached I will show you. Um, how to mitre right so you got a 45 degree angle here you're going to basically bring up the binding here make like a U shape and pop your binding so your raw edges meet the um, the edge here so this folded edge should be like, let me just clip that. So the folded edge So the folded edge should be here. So you should have like a, a V shape with a fabric. And this folded edge should be 45 degree angle going into this corner here and then what we're going to do then is go back to the sewing machine put this back underneath put the needle down measuring a quarter of an inch from this edge in and it should land there we're going to reverse stitch and then carry on sewing all the way down to the next corner Right, so we're going to sew a quarter of an inch and we're just going to reverse like two or three stitches. Go forward two or three. I went four then, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go back. And then basically I've mitered my corner and I will show you how to actually mitre the edge once we get to that point that, um, when we come to making the final few steps. So I'm just going to carry on sewing a quarter of an inch, matching up my edges. I'm stopping every so often to make sure my binding is matching up the edge. And once again I'm going to stop, make sure it's all level. And matching up. Now I'm going to stop again because I'm coming to a corner a quarter of an inch away. Like so. Bring up my needle. At so this point I'm going to show you from this camera angle of how to actually mitre the edge. 
So I'm pulling up my foot, pulling this away slightly. And then I'm just going to basically grab my bind in here, twist. So it's a 45 degree angle like we did last time. Clip that into place. And then I'm just going to take it back under my machine. Put my foot down, making sure my needle position will hit the quarter of an inch mark. Go forward a few stitches and reverse a few stitches. And then just carry on sewing. Right, so I'm just going to stop round about here, which is just under the, um, the tie at the bottom. And I'm just going to reverse my stitch. Right, and cut my thread. Right, so I'm left with a large piece of binding still attached and the piece of binding at the start which is about six inches. So I'm just going to, where that sewn line is underneath that first tie that I started off at, I'm just going to trim back the binding which has got the most bulk on. Now I normally keep pieces like this for when I do quilts and then I just basically put them all together to make one large scrap e-binding. Right, so the next thing we need to do is basically get rid of this excess here. So I get some wonder clips and clip. And I do the same with the the first part of the binding that I actually did. Now this might not be the conventional way of finish off the binding but this is my personal preference and making sure that it's um, a neat finish and um, this is how I've learned and taught myself. So you'll need a pin, just a, an ordinary pin. You're going to match up the binding together so as you can see they're being joined together and we're just going to keep rolling until it's slightly taut so you can feel it pulling we're going to get the pin and pop those in together so I'm just clipping the binding I'm not clipping it to the I'm not clipping it to the actual um, cover, I'm just clipping the two pieces of binding together. Making sure the two folded edges meet up, so as you can see they're level. Then the next thing I do is, and I know this isn't the conventional way, but this is how I've taught myself over the 20 odd years that I've been binding um, quilts together. I get a friction pen and adjust where that pin is run a line from the folded edge to the raw edge on both sides so I take that pin out now and those clips out So as you can see, if I pull that slightly, those two lines are practically the same place as each other. So what I can, what I do now is taking the first piece of binding and where that line is, I measure up a quarter of an inch and draw another line. So as you can see, the bottom line was my original drawn line 
and the top line is my new drawn line we are going to trim back this excess here and I'm going to cut on that second drawn line like so and then I'm just going to repeat the same process with this long piece measure measure towards the raw edge the raw short edge up a quarter of an inch draw a line and then trim it off at that line now I'm going to open up this bottom binding and open up this top binding pop these now this could be a bit of a a twist um, you will have to bring twist the actual um, the cover together we're going to bring these two together so that's right side to right side matching up the two short edges the two short raw edges now if you like me um, I know that's going to move if I don't pin it so I'm just going to pin it like so and this side now obviously you can see that it's trying to fold but I've actually before I actually sew I always make sure it just naturally folds back and loose go of the panel and see if it's twisted well it is actually twisted I've just worked out so I clip it and do it again so it's not twisted and just let those naturally fall together again oh I didn't so I know that's not twisted I'm just going to clip that better together Now I'm going to sew on my, at my sewing machine a quarter of an inch away across. Now you might want to squash this all together. And I'm going to reverse my stitches at both the start and at the end. I'm going to take my need pins out as well as I go along. And then don't worry if you can still see any of your drawn lines, don't worry about that. The if you've used a friction pen we can get rid of that with the iron and we're just going to press, finger press those that seam open and then it will naturally because I've just pulled it fold it back upon itself and then I'm just going to go from where I finished off carry on sewing all the way to where I started a quarter of an inch seam allowance
now I'm just going to go to my iron and get rid of those um, drawn lines that I did on that binding. It's obviously not on this one side, but I'm going to get rid of those. And then I'll meet back at the table. So we're coming to the final stages of the binding now. Um, so the next thing we need to do is, as you can see, you've got your mitered corners. I'm going to get rid of some of this thread as well. Thread. Uh. <laughs> Yes, low if you're watching Fred. <laughs> right, so what I tend to do is just slightly not going into my sewn line. I'm just going to trim it back at an angle. As you can see, it's marginal, and I do that for four or four edges. So making sure I'm not going over any of those sewn lines like so and the next thing we need to do is flip this panel over and I'll show you what to do next right so now we're gonna flip this over so it's the lining facing up we're gonna bring this bind in to the the side of the lining Now, we need to get a neat mitered corner here. So the way I do that is going from the one edge, my mitre, I basically fold and clip. Fold and clip to so it's at a 45 degree angle here. No, I'm just that's better. So it's at a 45 degree angle here. And I'll just keep clipping all the way around. And doing that same method, like you're folding a bed sheet on a bed, on a mattress, and um, doing that same method all the way around on the four corners. Once you've done that, I will show you how to sew it all together. Right, so now I've put the binding to the back and clipped it all the way around. And done the corners as well, like most of the corners as you can see here. You need to decide whether you want to hand stitch this um, or you're going to machine stitch it. I'm going to machine stitch it and show you a quicker way. So the way I do this is flip this to the right side facing up. And you're going to have to stitch in the ditch. You're going to have to really stitch in the ditch as close as you can to this binding where it's folded over to meet round to the red. So take your time. And it should be catching the binding on the back. I'm just going to double check to make sure it's catching my binding, which it is, on the back. And then I'm just going to sew all the way around. And when I come to the corners, I'm going to pop my needle down and then pivot around that corner. And then I will show you the final steps of making sure that the, um, the ties are securely on. Right, so now I've sewn all the way around. I'm going to flip it over. Take the clips um, from the centre of those ties. Right, so the next thing, this is optional, um, I found if I didn't do this when I was tying it together, because I tie it quite tightly, um, I was finding that it was 
there was a bit of a tension. So basically I get the tie, fold it towards the machine and I just run a row of stitches across there on the actual binding making sure I reverse the stitches and I do that for all four pieces. And this just stops it from really putting tension on so I've only run a few stitches and reversed my stitches and I'll do that for all four ties so I'll just do that now. Right and that's your finished cover. As you can see it's finished and um, I've just tied it together. My machine has um, quite a high um, thread, sp thread spool um, where they sit so mine does actually sit up a bit weird here but most machines it's generally flat um, but yeah I love this machine cover um, I really do mine as you notice doesn't touch the bottom of the table because my machine's too big and the panels that I produced I didn't really want them to touch the table anyway so if you like this tutorial please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed please click the subscribe button and click that notification bell for making sure that you actually know when you when I upload the next videos I want to say thank you for joining me and thanks for enjoying me on this sew along of the just so happy machine cover have a nice day bye